Hey guys, it's Naisha from Sephora Pro here, and you guys have been asking in the comment section for a dramatic fall look. So here it is. If you're gonna go out somewhere, you're gonna go to a nice wedding, something really beautiful, or you're just gonna wear some nice jewel tone sweaters, this is a really great look, so stay tuned. So I'm just clipping my hair back now because I wanna get it out of the way. I'm going to spray my face with Caudalie Beauty Elixir. It's antimicrobial, which is great for my acne prone skin. So it feels really good to start with this. The next thing I wanna do is use my Belief Water Essence. I like a moisturizer that feels really light and this just feels exactly like water. It gives me nice hydration and doesn't leave any texture behind underneath my makeup. So I'll be using my Sunday Riley Martian Water Toner, and this is a mattifying toner, and I'm gonna press it in just like I did the Belief product, and just kind of massage any areas that I want to help control oil, which is basically all over. And my Clinique uh, Pep Start Eye Cream, I'm gonna put that underneath my eyes. It's really lightweight, so I'm actually gonna put it on my eyelids as well. It helps to prime for my eye makeup. I tend to get dry eyelids because uh, my eczema sometimes flares up, and this is a really great lightweight eye cream. I also put any leftover around the mouth because usually the mouth area has the same issues as the eye area, darkness, dehydration. So I'm just using a beauty blender to take off any excess. And it's nice to put a little skincare in your beauty blender because as you blend your makeup throughout the process, it'll just give it a nice glow. Next is one of my favorite foundations, my Perfection Mist Foundation from Sephora Collection. This is really great if you're trying to build coverage. I need a little bit extra coverage on my jawline because of hormonal acne. And this is really great to get easy coverage very quickly. I like to use almond because I like to be a little bit tan. Uh, my body tends to get a little bit more color than my face and any foundation that I got on my hairline easily comes off. I'm just going to swipe it with a beauty blender. So I am using the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Foundation Stick and I normally would use the shade Amber for my complexion but today I'm just using the highlight shade uh, Linen and I'm just using it in the center of my face. Today I'm using it as a highlight and the reason I'm putting it on with a beauty blender straight from the stick is I find that I apply much less product. Um, you can swipe it directly on the face if you want before highlight. I don't want to put much product, I just want to add a little bit of light to the center of my face. I'm going underneath my eyes to create a little bit of a triangle between my brows and down my nose. I don't really like to contour my nose because I find it's a bit much even for a dramatic look. Um, but if I highlight, it creates this shadow on the sides. So it's much easier. So now I'm just gonna be setting any areas that I highlighted with my Black Up Anti-Shine Powder. I'm using the shade number one. If I was using a shade for my complexion, I'd probably do a two, uh, maybe even a three in the summer. I find this powder is great if you struggle with finding the correct color if you have deeper skin. I'll be using it with my Choice Rot Highlight Brush. It has this sort of domed uh, tip to it, so if it's really nicely underneath the eye area, it's really soft and it creates a really beautiful blend. I'll be using my Bare Minerals Ready Bronzer in the high dive with my Pro Angled Blush Brush. So I'm basically contouring the outsides of my face where the sun would hit me naturally, my hairline. I put a little bit on my eyelids in the crease to sort of help my eyeshadow blend that I'm gonna put on in a second. I'm sort of creating a W across my face, uh, on my cheekbones, and then the sides of my nose, just giving it sort of a natural flush. I find this is nice if you are trying to contour your nose a little bit and you're doing a little bit too much. This just gives it a little bit of shape without trying too hard. So now there's really no product on my brush and I'm just sort of blending it in. So now I'm just using that same beauty blender and I'm just gonna be bouncing it over my uh, bronzer just to blend everything. Just to make it really seamless. So I'm just putting a little bit of extra powder over my brows. I'm getting ready to fill them in. If you have a creamy foundation on your brows and you don't set it, your brow product isn't gonna go on properly. So to start my brows, I'll be using the Benefit Precisely My Brow in shade number four. I'm just brushing up my brows so I can see any little holes that may be in my brow that I need to pay extra attention to. So I'm just drawing a straight line from the start of my brow to the arch and then from there to the end of my brow and I will be filling in the tail of my brow. I have really sparse brows so I have to really build it from the bottom up 
uh, if you have pretty normal brows, I would say normal density, brushing them up is still going to help you see any little holes that you need to fill in. Sometimes those little holes aren't visible to the naked eye, but if you take a photo, it'll blow right through the hair and you'll have little patchy sort of um, areas in your brow. So now that I've given my brows a little bit of structure, I'll be using my Tarte Brow Mousse in Taupe with my Anastasia brush number 12. And I like the taupe because it's a bit lighter than the number four pencil. And it just gives me a little bit of definition from light to dark in my brows. So just sketching through my brows and I'm just turning the brush sideways so I can get a better start to my brow. I'm creating the shape and then I'm gonna smooth it through with a spoolie just to blend it and make sure everything looks nice and soft in the beginning of my brow. So now I'm just going back in and cleaning up anything with a pencil if I need to. Next, I'll be using my Anastasia brush number 18, which is a concealer brush. So now I'll be using this same Hourglass Vanish Stick in Linen. I'm just adding a little bit of lift to my brows to prep for shadow because I don't like to put anything frosty as far as shadow is concerned under my brow, so I'd rather do it with concealer. So now I'm using my favorite cream eyeshadow, my Marc Jacobs Twinkle Pop in Volver. I'm just putting it on my lid. So now I'm just blending my Twinkle Pop with my flat concealer brush, and this is the number 76 Pro Brush. You can blend this with your finger. I just find it's a little bit easier with this concealer brush because my nails are a bit long. I love this cream shadow because it stays on all day. It adds a nice little glimmer of color. I don't want too much color on my lids. I put a little bit uh, on the bottom inner corner just to add a little bit of brightness. And also my eyes are a bit watery sometimes, so this helps shadows stick there a bit better when I put powder shadow there. Next, I'll be using my Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance Palette. And I'm using the brush that comes in the palette. The first shade that I'll be using is Raw Sienna. And I'm just using that in the crease of my eye and blending back and forth. Um, I have a very large crease vertically, so I can go pretty high with my crease color. If you have smaller eyes or less space, just don't go very high. Next, I'll be using Cypress Umber in the corner of my eyes with the opposite end of the brush and just pressing it on and then going into Real Gur and just blending it out. Anytime I want to blend a dark color, I'll be using a medium or a light color to sort of buff it out. I'm brushing away any fallout with my blush brush, or you can use a beauty blender if you like. And once I blend it, it may not be as dark as I want it, so I can just repeat those steps and go back into that dark brown and blend it again with the orange. Anytime you use a dark shadow, uh, I find it's easier to start with something light to medium and then build intensity. So next, I'll be using my ring finger to apply a little bit of Primavera to my eyelid. And I'm just tapping it on because I already have that Marc Jacobs Twinkle Pop shadow underneath, so it's gonna stick really nicely. After that, just blend really lightly with the same shadow brush. So before I do my cat eye, I'm just gonna add a little bit of a tight line with my Sephora Collection Contour Pencil in Black Lace, which is just, just a matte black. This can be kind of messy. The whole point is to make sure your lash line is nice and dark so that when you do your liquid, you don't have any gaps between your liner and your lashes. And I had a little bit of concealer on my lashes too, so this is just gonna help that everything looks nice and black and defined. I like to do this before mascara because I find this is impossible to do after I put mascara on. Next is my Dior Show Lash Maximizer 3D. So it's a lash conditioner and a primer. Um, I've been using this for years. I wear falsies a lot, so I find that putting lash conditioner on really helps so that they don't break and they grow. You can wear this at night as a lash conditioner. I usually just wear it during the day. I find that turning the wand vertically helps get more product on the lashes and then you can comb it through as you normally would. Next, uh, I'll be using my Stila. So I'm using the uh, Stila Huge Extreme Lash Mascara. And I have long lashes, but they're very skinny and they're brown, so I love a thickening mascara. I recently discovered this and it's amazing. So you can see the difference already. My lashes are much longer, much thicker. And what I like to do is brush them up and then I go on the tops of my lashes 
and put more mascara. I find that putting mascara all the way around the lash gives a much thicker lash as opposed to just brushing it on the underside. Now I'm gonna do my cat eye and uh, I think people don't realize that the Kat Von D uh, tattoo liner in Trooper has a pump on it so you can pump the liquid liner into the cap to disperse more liquid. I'm just starting my cat eye on the ends and sort of creating the shape I want on both sides before I finish it to make sure it's somewhat even. And I'm not pulling my eye, I'm just kind of holding the skin taut so that I don't have any drag. So I'm just sort of comparing. I don't really mind if it's not perfect as long as it's pretty close to perfect. So next I'm just resting the liquid liner along my lashes and dragging until it meets up with that little tail that I made on the outer corner. So I'm super excited about this a lash collaboration uh, with Sephora Collection House of Lashes. I'll be using the Everlasting Lashes. Uh, they're really fluffy and really thick, exactly how I like my lashes, and they have a flare on the outer corner. So I'm removing them and just sort of pushing them away with my thumb off the tray so I don't rip them. And I'm going to cut them. If you're cutting your lashes, I would definitely hold it up to your eye to measure it. I know my eyes pretty well, so I can just cut it by looking at it. And you always want to cut from the outer corner. I'll be using the House of Lashes glue as well. So I'm putting on a layer of glue on the first lash, then I'm moving on to the second. And while the second one is drying, I'll be working with the first lash, just to give it time to dry so I don't have to wait. I'm placing the lash in the middle and this sort of adhering the inner corner and then the outer corner. So I'll be using my Sephora Collection Pro Gel Eyeliner Brush, number 26, just to push my lashes in a little bit further. Sometimes your lashes can stick to your fingers, so this just really helps to adhere the lash in those really hard to reach places. I have a whole video on how I do my lashes, so you can refer to that if you like. So I'm just using the same liquid liner from Kat Von D to push my lashes in. Any white you see on the lash band is gonna dry. I just like to do this last little step because it, it further pushes the lashes and then make sure they adhere properly. So I'm taking my Sephora Collection contour eye pencil in Love Affair, which is this really deep, sparkly purple color. And I'm not rimming inside my eye, I'm rimming along my lashes. And you can use a brush to blend, but I find just using my finger works really well, just to give it a light, smoky effect. So it's not harsh. Next I'll be using my Sephora Collection Pro Precision Smudge Brush and I'm going back into that orange shade Roger and I'm just rimming the eye creating the same shadow I have on top on the bottom just so everything looks nice and cohesive and then going back into the dark brown the cypress umber and just rimming it concentrating on the outside corner so I get definition. Going back into the dark brown and just rimming it on the outer corners. So using the brush that comes with the Modern Renaissance palette, same thing, but I'm just giving it a little bit more smoke and diffusing it a little bit more with the same colors. I like the look of sort of dark circles underneath the eye. I think it makes it look really mysterious. It makes your smoky eye look a little bit more edgy. Now taking more mascara and just sort of pressing it into my false lashes. I normally wouldn't do this, but I want a little bit more drama. And I'm also putting it on the lower lashes. So I'm finishing off my complexion with the Stila Aqua Glow Watercolor Blush, and this is Water Blossom. And I'll just be applying this with my fingers and blending it with a beauty blender. So I don't want too much blush because I'll be putting a dark lip on. If you struggle with putting too much blush on, I would suggest that you put it on after you put your lip on so you know exactly how much to put on. So I'll be using my Too Faced Melted Matte Liquid Lipstick, and this is a really beautiful dark brown, and the shade is called Naughty by Nature. The first thing I'll be doing is creating an X at my Cupid's bow, just for symmetry's purposes, and then working from there, and then filling in my top lip, and then just sort of looking at it and making sure the height of each side is okay, and then evening that out. I'm just using the flat part of the doe foot applicator for my application. So for the bottom lip, I'll be drawing a straight line across the middle, again, just for symmetry, and then filling in the rest of it. For this, I'm just using a Q-tip to sort of blend away the middle of my bottom lip so that it has a little bit more dimension. 
So I'm using the same formula liquid lipstick from Too Faced and this is the shade It's Happening which is a bright hot pink shade. And I'm just blending it with my finger, patting it on to sort of create an ombre effect. So now I'm just touching up a little bit with a little bit more powder towards the center of my face with my Black Up Anti-Shine powder. So I started with my Caudalie Beauty Elixir and I'm just finishing with it. Um, again, it's antimicrobial, really great for my acne prone skin and it sets my makeup. And I am finishing with one of my favorite fragrances from Atelier and this is Rose Anonym. It has this really great sort of spicy rose scent to it and I feel like it really goes very nicely with this look. Okay guys, so there it is, a nice fall dramatic look. You would use the same techniques to achieve something that's a little bit more neutral. We just bumped up the color, so hopefully you enjoyed it. Leave me any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe so you see all of our videos. Bye.